Okay, in continuing, here I am in Dreamweaver, and the essential things that I want you to do this week is to make a copy of your portfolio file, name it Portfolio, and tuck it into this folder called Module Portfolio. We're going to edit this particular portfolio file here as opposed to this one. This is your actual portfolio out here. Now, I recognize you guys probably have a ton of different files sitting here, but I'm looking at the main index sitting outside here on your root, and then I'm looking in the SGET 621 folder. And in there, this is your instructional design menu right here, and then this is the file that we're going to play with uh, this week. Now, I have a couple of tutorials that I posted uh, related to manipulating this file, and I want to give you a quick summary of those particular pieces here, particularly in light of the fact that you've just listen to or read through the HTML CSS overviews. Again, each of our pages is composed of content. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me go ahead and split that here and I'll show you up in this area here starting um, here. This is my HTML tag that opens my entire document and if we flow all the way down to the bottom of our document that's where it closes similar to where we have a body that opens and we have a body that closes up here we have our head that opens right and if we take a look we can scroll all the way down and we will see where the head closes right here encased in that head is all sorts of information about the style now later on we will be able to pull the style information out of here and put it into a whole separate file that multiple web pages can look at. And therefore, the power of CSS is to be able to manipulate just this style information and have it applied to several pages. So, in order to look at CSS, we need to know that there's a definition of the style, and it usually sits within the head of the page, and then there's an application of the style where we go ahead and we actually highlight and apply information. So here we can see the div ID equals brains. We've got some stuff in here. And if we go back up to our CSS, we can find that we will indeed have a div definition called brains. And um, there it is right there. And so there's that little div called brains, and this is what it would look like when we apply it. And down here is actually where we've applied it. So how do we manipulate these and, and work around it without having to fuss with too much code? First of all, one of the things I want to point out is as you click through your web page on any given part of it, notice down here you have little pieces that change. And what's happening is the nesting of these tags, because these tags act kind of like sandwiches. They open and close, but then another tag can open and close within it. Here's my wrapper tag, and if I click on it, that highlights my entire wrapper piece. Here is my row 2, which is obviously in this case a div for the entire row. Here is my tools viz box, and of course here's my last one, which is the paragraph uh, with a class of content, course content on it. So how do you manipulate these things once you've recognized them? The best thing that I like to do is to go ahead and, and visually identify, okay, I want to manipulate this particular box. Click on its tag down here. Notice that it says div pound tools viz. Well, that pound is an indication that it is a div tag, and we can also see that, of course, because it says dot um, excuse me, it says div. So if we come over here to our CSS rules and we find the uh, appropriate pound tag, in this case tools viz, here, I can go ahead and click on it. Remember there's two parts. I've clicked on it down here just so I can identify visually. I know what I'm clicked into and this is indeed the box I want to. But the more important one is that I've come over here and clicked on my tools viz rule and now I'm going to come down to the pencil and choose to edit the entire uh, rule. So for example if I wanted to apply a background to that rule I could do that 
and there is the uh, background there. If I wanted to go back in and change, say, the type and change over to a totally different, um, let me get something very dramatic. There we go. We have now changed the type overall. So that by manipulating this pound tools viz, I'm manipulating the content of this particular box. Notice that my text flowed through to both of these. This didn't, this little box here didn't turn green because it's got an overriding rule on top of it. Notice here where it says P course content. In order to change this content here, I'd actually have to go over to the next nested rule, which is P dot course content. But basically I wanted to show you that in terms of manipulating these particular pieces, you can manipulate anything you want as long as you recognize which rule is in effect and then you go over and you find the rule over here. Okay. Now there are times when you have something highlighted here and you have perhaps a rule that's in effect but you don't actually have a style rule over here written for it. If that's the case, of course, then what you would want to do is create a new rule and then you would want to jump back out to that video that speaks to creating a new rule or vice versa. Sometimes you might have a rule sitting out over here, but you may not have anything that uses that rule here in the middle of the page. And then for that, what you would want to do is jump out and take a look at my video tutorials on how to apply either HTML rules or CSS classes. That's it for now. Take a look through the video tutorials. Modify your portfolio to whatever degree you want. I would want you to have at least a background image in there and at least some other graphic in there, whether you sit it in there as an individual image or if you sit it in as a background, which is actually easier in this exercise. Um, those are the things I need you to get done this week. Thanks.